Well, good afternoon. It's Thursday again. Uh, time to check in, show you that I'm still breathing. Now, what's new to my mess here? I did something. Oh, I set up another security camera outside due to the fact that I had that guy come in the yard a week or so ago. The more cameras, the better. Uh, Workbench, I haven't done anything to it. I really don't need to have to change the power supply one of these days. I got a few other things I want to do, but no biggie. No fishing this week. Little Rio River's got to be just plain full of salmon right now, and if you still had mixed in, means we haven't had no rain yet. It might rain. Well, it's going to rain tomorrow, they say, but I don't think it's going to be much of a rain, so it shouldn't have much effect on them. But, uh,. We're going to get some decent rain here pretty quick, and they're all going to head up towards Garberville and Willits and places like that. It's always interesting when the first run hits, because you can watch them go through the ripples like crazy. Lots of them. Come to think of it, the Mad River should have a run of salmon going through it right about now. They don't even need to rain. They'll go through it the way it is, but there's plenty of water in it. Can't fish for them, but nice to look at. What else can I say? Not much. I'm going to go to Bear River tomorrow, maybe Saturday. Went last Friday or Saturday. Friday was pretty good. Saturday was pretty weak. There was no dancer Saturday. Changed my bedroom around up there, so moved my TV and my security monitor, camera monitor around where I could watch it a lot easier when I'm playing on my computer. Little stuff like that. I'm actually going to keep working on my bedroom, get it all cleaned up so it um, looks like a human lives in it, not a pig. Okay, not a pig. Just a very unorganized person right now. Got too much stuff. Keep thinking about selling my boat. I don't really think I want to use it that much anymore. I got it out front now. Got to change the front six or eight feet of wiring because it just cracked up. I think a weed eater got to it once. Uh, got to get the motor running. Got the fuel line and everything right there. Just got to hook it up and start it up. I hate not having a boat. Actually, there's two boats out there. One's inside the other. But I got my kayak. And that's a lot of a lot of work. Is. They're all a lot of work. Is. And actually, the boat's probably the easiest one to put in and out of the water of them all. It's a big boat. Slides on, slides off. But it costs a lot more to run it. And get to where I'm going. It, it actually uses up a lot more gas while I'm dragging that thing behind me. What I'd really like to do is find a place down a Sonoma, store it, just go down there, use our striped bass, it would be perfect for that. Not that I ever get down there. Oh well, simple things in life I enjoy. I'm just hoping the river gets open again so I can go down there and throw some worms in the bottom river and catch sucker fish with nothing else. They're always fun. Just enjoyment of fishing without having to toss lures all day long. I used to do that all the time and never bother me, but now I just want to take it easy. I wish we had to run a flounder up here like we did down in Napa River. I'd be out there in a kayak trying to catch flounder, but I've never heard of any of them up here like that. Not really interested in dancing much more. Can't really find a dance partner that I that enjoys being around me, and I enjoy being around. So I'm gonna get together. I had a few people that I've made, I clicked with pretty good, but few and far between. Wish I could find a dance, uh, not dance, but a fishing partner. But that takes money. <clears throat> it's hard to find a young guy around here now that doesn't want to get drunk and get stoned all the time. That's not me. I don't, I don't mind going out and partying, but it's, there's a certain time for partying and a certain time for fishing. I don't mix the two. It'd be nice if my kid would have been interested in fishing, but all he wanted to do was swim when he got to the water. Oh well. Like I said, last, posted last week on Facebook, I'm not eating hardly any sugar. Just what's in my natural food. I try to break that down. No candy bars, no cookies, no nothing like there. And I feel crappier now than I did when I was taking all that crap. I don't know if it's because I'm not getting the sugar in my 
whatever is in my body is it makes I'm not even sure all this stuff is working too hard and that's making me feel bad. I'm not sure. Now once in a while I go into sugar shortage because I don't take enough sugar. But that's not too often. Not as much as I thought it would be actually. My feet hurt pretty much every night. Didn't hurt like that before I went to see the doctor. I uh well, if I take a glass of milk before I go to bed, my feet don't hurt so much because there's enough sugar in it to, I guess, help. I didn't think you'd be under sugar and have your feet hurt as much as over sugar and have your feet hurt. I don't know. This body's getting old. I'm going to turn in for a new one. I want to go up walking down the river. I want to do like you used to do in Sonoma Creek. Start off at Waka Caliente. Go all the way up to Madron, turn around, come back down. Fishing, playing around, swimming. Pretty much you made that trip, you had to swim, walk, climb through bushes. You pretty much did it all. It was a nice run, nice walk. That was my idea of exercise. The gym just doesn't interest me at all. I used to walk around town here quite a bit. And I got very, very bored looking at the same street day after day. First time I tried walking up 9th Street, I about had a heart attack and had to stop a few times. But after I did it a dozen times or so, I could walk from the bottom and out all the way to the top and be in fine shape when I got the top. And then stop. But, like I said, I got very bored of the same road over and over again. Think about the simpler times in life. I used to like to fish when I was younger, much younger. I started off fishing. I fished for bluegill. My dad took me up to Sears for trout once in a while. I actually caught one one time. Somewhere we got a video of me holding a trout. Probably decayed and died by now. Not the trout, but the video. Uh, an 8mm camera. I knew a trout was dead and decayed and died. Hate it. Um, but uh, when I was like 8, 10 years old, my dad used to take me out to Sutter Bypass, fish for catfish. Put on a piece of bait, chuck it out there, and just wait for something to bite. Caught a lot of catfish. To me, they were big, but back then they were probably only 18 inches long. Which is pretty decent. Right now, I'd be happy to catch an 8 to 10-inch catfish. I haven't caught one of those in years. Uh, it's funny, now I go to the same place. I still got a lot of those 8 to 10-inches, but now, once in a while, I get one that weighs 4 or 5 pounds up in there, which is still not very big compared to what a lot of them I've been catching in other places. But when I was a kid, I never caught anything that big. A couple times I hooked something big enough that never slowed down. I have no idea what that was. Could have been anything. I mean, it was like it was like a freight train. I mean, it could have been a big ass striper up there because we did have stripers and set our bypass back then. It could have been a sturgeon because they were in there too. But whatever it was, it didn't fight like anything I'm used to because it just took off. Uh, here. I cast out there and lay a worm on the bottom, I'll catch a sucker probably, maybe a squall fish. I don't mind those things, they're something they catch, they're fun, be sitting around the house. So for now it's getting really cold and I don't know how long I can stay down here before I freeze to death. Uh, I'd like to go and try some steelhead fishing this year. I just don't have it in me no more. Get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, drive all the way up to the Mad River, start fishing and Chance that I don't catch a fish till 10. Which is always wondering me, why do I get up so early when I just go there at 9 o'clock? Don't have to get up early. It's a lot warmer by that time, and I could probably still catch the same fish. Maybe I'll try that this year, I don't know. But again, I used to still fish for steelhead. I'd get up in the morning, me and Baz, we'd get up in the morning, we'd drive to wherever we're going. Start off before. Well, it's still dark when we start walking. Walk for a few miles. Well, I walk sometimes four miles. He walked about two miles. And I'd walk back down to where he was by way of the river. Took a logging road to get up there. And we were usually out at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I had all the still that I ever wanted right there. A lot of catch and release and stuff. Uh, but that was then. This is now. I mean, there's still a lot of fish in these rivers can't keep anything then which kind of bothers me because technically I don't care if I keep them a lot but, I, but I, I'd like to keep one once in a while it just it's not the same when you can't keep a fish 
I mean, I'd let a lot of fish go when I could keep them, but I miss not being able to keep fish once in a while. That's why I go to the Mad River. You can keep them there. But with my gas alarm, which is one tank a month, Mad River and back is over half a tank for me. That means I don't do anything the rest of the month. So I don't want to be on empty because that costs me an arm and a leg to fill up. I shouldn't say it's one tank a month. It's a certain amount of money per month, which if I have a tank, it's about a, the whole tank. <sighs> Today's when I was under a dollar. I could go anywhere and go fishing. I used to go anywhere and go fishing. That when I had a car that it didn't guzzle a little gas like mine does. I trust it to drive around. I just can't afford to drive it around. Still working on that engine problem where it's, the computer's whacked out or something. The oxygen sensor doesn't work or something. Anyhow, I did hear that uh, there's some black sea bass, or what do you call them? Blue, blue rockfish. Biting pretty good down today. I saw some pictures of some really nice ones. My biggest one down there was about five pounds, which is really nice, I think, in any house. He's usually only getting about 14 inches or so, not very big. <clears throat> but, when I think about where I want to go fishing, I can't make my mind, I want to go to the jetty and try for those things, which is a long walk out to the jetty. Or go to the lower river and try catch, to throw spinners or shrimp and try catch some salmon, which I have to let go, but it's not near the walk. And they're a lot of fun to catch. I still enjoy catching jack smelt down the bay, but I didn't get any, well, I did get one last time, didn't I? Actually, I got two. We used one for a bait and caught another one. Still pretty slow. To me, jack smelt is kind of like fishing for a trout. You use light gear, change your bait a little bit. Just cast out to wait till they bite. They fight about like a small trout, too. And. If I want to keep a small trout, I'm going to smoke them like a jerky anyhow. Jack smelt, I just let go. Like I said, I sure wish they had flounders down here like we used to down in the Napa River. It's November. Napa River used to be full of flounder. Lower Napa, or Napa River by Napa Number 2 Slough. Uh, even down as far as the towers. Pretty good fishing for flounder in the flats. But that was then, this is now. And we're talking... Shoot. That's 40 years ago. I've been up here for almost 30. And that was a good 10 years before that. It's me and Kenny Doss used to go down there. Got a, I don't even remember how we started fishing for a flounder. I think we might have been fishing for bait for stripers and caught a flounder. And tried again and caught more flounder. And we started using shrimp and caught more flounder. And we had a ball catch a flounder. And when the flounder disappeared, come December when the rain starts all winter long, nothing going on. Then summertime comes and the stripers start up. I couldn't fish for flounder because they weren't really there. So we started throwing anchovies again for stripers, caught a few stripers. And I don't know what got us into deciding just to troll with something we had in our tackle box. But we did that and we caught some decent stripers trolling and it was no stopping after that. It was all trolling. Yeah, not all trout. I did like fishing for with mudsuckers for stripers quite a bit. I got places down there. It was pretty well. I had places down there. It was pretty well guaranteed to get stripers. Some of them are still there. Some of them ain't. Trolling. <laughs> I went to a lot of different methods before I found the one I really liked. That's a uh, hair razors on a three-way three-way splitter. Should be a two-way, but I've cheated. It's a third one on there. I'm not sure about the legality. Yeah, probably not. It's not so bad if you catch three legal stripers at one time. Then it gets a, bit, a little bit difficult trying to get all three of them in a stupid net. I did that one time. I caught a lot of doubles. But one time I caught, hooked three, probably six pounds each stripers on one run. First two weren't hard getting a net, but that third one that's out there about eight feet from the spreader, every time I dipped down to grab it, it swam away. Finally ended up losing it. It's okay, I already had my limit. And I don't think I kept them anyhow. I you know, don't want to go to get a limit too quick. Get out some fun. Up here, I wish we had some fun. I wouldn't even mind living in Mary's Earl, so I could cast a rod out in the Ellis Lake and sit there with everybody says Ellis Lake is the worst place in the world to fish. It's 
where I actually started fishing. That's where I caught my first bluegill. And I actually said, I like this. It's a city lake. It's a good sized lake in downtown Marysville. After that, you know, stop me. Until gas prices went way up. Then it slowed me way down. Then I moved up here. Well, actually, I moved over here first. Then the gas prices went way down. I moved up here. I said, hey, I got, I don't have no stripers up here to speak of, but I do have sturgeon in the river. There's quite a few sturgeon in this river up here, actually. Maybe I can have some fun catching some sturgeon. Kind of like a big catfish. And, uh,. I ended up playing around with salmon and stripe, uh, steelhead and squawfish, and I really never tried for sturgeon until one day they closed the river for sturgeon fishing. All fresh water up here for sturgeon fishing, actually. The only place you can fish for sturgeon now is in a, the bay or ocean, and there's so many crabs you can't put a bait on the bottom. Anyhow, after they closed it is when I started noticing a lot more sturgeon in the river. Don't that that's because before people's catching too many of them or I just started started noticing them after that. Even still people catch a few sturgeon a year fishing for salmon or steelhead with roe. Not so bad. Most of the sturgeon here are small, but there's some big ass sturgeon in this river. And I think you hook one on roe, fish for steelhead or salmon, you probably wouldn't land it. They're way too big, it's got kinda of like 10 footers and stuff like there. It's possible. The right gear, it can be done. I could do it with the right gear and, and a good hole. Well, you got one of those big old holes, there's nothing in it, but just a hole. You could fight a fish all day long if it doesn't roll on your line to cut it. Don't like to do that, it tires them out too much. I used to love fishing for sturgeon now forever with my steelhead rod. 15 pound test or so, but the fish were all. 40 inches long or so, which is just right for steelhead rod. Not big enough to keep, but a lot of fun. Uh, and, yeah, my last trip out, the fish was actually August? September? August, I think it was. I went to the Oroville. I fished the Fed the River. And I, I, mean, I mean, I had a lot of fun. Striped bass were in there, but I wasn't going to fish the stripers. The odds of catching one of those was way low. So I threw some worms out there in a little back eddy because the river is pretty high. So I found a little back eddy there and I chucked worms out and left some in the bottom. I started catching sucker fish. Those people just throw them up in the bank. Not me, I throw them back because I like catching fish and those are fish. An ultralight rod, they give a pretty good fight. I would have settled small fish, sucker fish, bluegill, anything. Little catfish there in the river, but just pretty much figured I was going to catch sucker fish, which I did. But I ain't complaining. Fish is a fish to me. And there's a few fish I won't fish for. There's a little big game fish. I'm not really interested in those because, like marlin and stuff like there, you're not fishing. You're you're sitting in a boat holding a rod, waiting for the captain to catch something, then you. Just Armstrong and in, which wears you out. To me, that's not fishing, the captain's fishing. Tarpon? Yeah, there's a possibility I wouldn't mind fishing for tarpon. Because I, you actually try to fish for those. But I'm really not into big fish like that. The biggest fish I ever fish for is sturgeon. That's pretty boring to me, too. I've spent a lot of hours, no bites or anything. And my biggest sturgeon I got, actually, Sacramento River. Got there, cast about my sturgeon gear, which is the first thing you always do. Then I set up my tent. Just got my tent set up, and my pole bent over, set the hook on this big sturgeon, landed it, threw it in the back of my truck, tore down my tent, threw it all in the back of my truck, and went home. Only allowed one sturgeon. When I was planning on actually spending some time with him, I called one immediately. That's how it goes. Wasn't complaining. It was a good sturgeon. It tastes good. And uh, if, like I said before, I wanted to figure I was going to start catching leopard sharks out here in the bay because leopard sharks are good smoked, but they say do not eat leopard sharks. 
that I can eat uh, halibut to come out of the bay, perch to come out of the bay, and pretty much anything else they don't say anything about not eating them. Limited eating of a lot of them. But if I can't eat a leopard, why can't if I can't eat a leopard, why can't I eat a halibut? They eat the same stuff in the bay. They're in the bay the same time. They're in, everything's the same. Explain to me that one. And halibut are harder to catch than leopards. I went out there and played with for them a few times. Not really hard. Just I was out in the area where they're at, and I kept messing around for them. Never got one. Kind of like a big flounder, really big flounder. I don't know, maybe after I got back from Alaska the last time, I kind of burned out. It's like everything is so so good in Alaska. Don't go to Alaska if you like fishing, because it just makes you see how bad it is down here. Even though you got some good spots, it just still seems so bad. I mean, I took a dinghy out in Alaska every day, and I could have filled that dinghy up. I mean, I, I kept a fish here and there for dinner. Caught a few a halibut, big halibut, playing around for little fish. Well, you know, I'm six pound test, so you know it wasn't too big. But uh, there was a couple days worth of food out each halibut I caught. I hooked some big ones that just kind of went away. You can know when you hook a big one, the pole bends over and just the line starts peeling off your reel, never slows down. You stop it and break your line, hopefully down by the hook. Uh, caught a big king salmon up there purely by accident, fishing for flounders and stuff like that. Luckily, it was the day I was actually throwing my bigger rod. It was about 20 pounds. 20 pound salmon out in the ocean fights really good. And I caught it by accident, like I said. I, ding thing didn't hit my line, hit my lure, ran into my line and got tangled up in it. But he still tastes good. First half, second half, the stupid fox cut. We should know better and leave things out for a couple hours while we're doing things. Because the foxes come down and get you every time. He did. I caught a lot of those blue rockfish or black rockfish, what do you call them down there? Bugs get out of my face. Uh, I didn't really care for them that much up in Alaska. You're okay. Mostly it was a halibut we went for. Occasionally I keep a couple flounder stuff over there. First thing I always started fishing for was um, cod. Never ate one of them, no. Hmm. I just cut them up and use them for bait. They work real good. Anyhow, I've been jabbering away quite a while. Just thinking a lot. I'm one of those guys who lives in the past because the future don't look that good. What future is left? Yeah, I earned it. I screwed off all my life, so now I'm <laughs> not screwing off anymore. Yeah, not much anyhow. Like I say, you get what you pay for. Well, you get what you work for, too. Okay, I'm going to get out of here. Just quit jabbering. Maybe next week I'll jabber some more. Who knows? Hope you'll have a good week. Catch you next week. Bye.